It often happens that you want to create a group of items in your Power BI report uh, or in Power BI semantic model. There are different ways to do that. You can build this group of items in your data warehouse using SQL code. Um, you can build it in Power Query using M code or custom columns. You can build it in DAX using calculated columns. But you can also create it inside Power BI using a visual editor that not many people are aware of it. But it's a really simple way to create it. Not only it creates it, it also adds it to the model. You can reuse it. You can also even see a little bit of behind the scene of that, which can help you to build it in other places as well. I'm Reza Rat and I'm going to show you in this video how we can create groups really simple, easy way inside Power BI Desktop. Let's go and check it out. Creating group of items is a common scenario. When you are building a report, you might have different um, people with different job titles. One of them is web, web developer, the other one is senior web developer, the other one is junior web developer. You might want to put them all in category of web development. Um, you can go and build this as a calculated column, DAX um, calculations, or in Power Query, or in SQL using uh, SQL code. But it is also possible to go and build it inside Power BI and you don't have to write any DAX code or any code uh, for that matter. You just build this through a graphical interface, which I'm going to show you. It has some benefits to do that using the graphical interface. So I'll go inside my Power BI solution here. As you can see here, I have uh, different education values, bachelor, partial college, graduate degree, high school, partial high school. Now let's say in my uh, calculations, I want to always group these two together. I'm um, partial high school and high school. I may also want to have graduate degree and partial college grouped together and bachelors to be one group for itself. Um, the way that I can do it in the graphical interface of Power BI desktop is that I'll go and find the field that is uh, this column, which is English education here. When I find the field, I'll go and click on the three dots in front of that field. That will bring the pop-up menu here, which one of the options in this menu is creating a new group. Once I create new group, the UI of that will appear like this. Uh, here is the name of the new column will be generated because this grouping will create a new column. Uh, I have ungrouped values on the left side, grouped values on the right side. I can select multiple items here using control key, high school, uh, partial high school. Once I select those, then I can say group. These two would be one group in here. Then I'll go and say, and uh, this is called, when you double click on this value, you can rename it. I would say this is called high school group. Then I'll go and choose other values here, partial college and graduate degree. I'll group those together as well. And I'm going to call this college group, college group. You can build as many as groups you want. If you made a mistake and you want to ungroup one of these values, you just select that, for example, ungroup it. Or if you want to group it back, you'll select it. You'll select the group that you want this to go on and say group so that it will add there. You can also group item by itself, like bachelors. I can say this is a group by itself and I say this is bachelors group. Uh, as you see right now, I grouped everything um, so I don't really need other group, but because this is a data that gets refreshed every day in tomorrow's data, I might have an education category that I did not consider here. So I say include other groups. It's a good practice to do that. When you say include other groups, it means that when in the future new data comes in, it will not be missed in your reporting. It will be in the other group. So once you do that, and this is the name of the field, I haven't changed it, English education groups, then I click on OK. What happens is that this will create a new column in my semantic model with that icon that it shows this is a new um, column. This column, however, is a grouping column. I can use this column to go and build a new visual. Here, for example, I can go and 
build a column chart using using English education as the values and internet sales amount uh, in English education as the axis, internet sales amount as the values, so the chart looks like this. Then if I want to have drill down, I can bring the actual education itself, the one that is not grouped as the second level here. Once we do that, then it gives us the ability to use these drill down functions where I click on this and I can go under college groups, I'll see uh, the subgroups of that or I click on higher school I'll see the subgroups of that I have a separate video talking about this drill down capabilities or if you use this fork it will drill down all of these at the same time so make sure to check out that drill down video or the other way to present it would be removing it from here and adding that English education as the legend in a clustered column chart this would separate the values so I can see how these values are separated of course, having something such as data label would be helpful here because then you would see the values. So the way that you present it is not the main focus on this video. The main focus of this video was just to show you how easy it is to create that group. And you saw that I created the group easily, but you want to maintain this group because in the future new values appear in your data that you have not considered at the beginning. So you may want to go and edit it. To edit it, you'll go to that field again, to the grouped version of it. You click on the three dots, you wouldn't create new group because that would create a new group on top of this group, which you don't want to do that. You click on edit groups. And when you click on edit groups, you'll get back to the same grouping configuration that you have here, where you can go and modify it and change it. It's a really simple way to do this grouping and uh, but the benefit of this is that this adds it as a column in your semantic model so any other uh, pages in this report or even other reports connected to this semantic model with the live connection they can use this grouped field. Uh, a little bit of internals about this field is that this grouping column is actually a calculated column. It's a DAX calculated column. Uh, but the UI helps you to build it. If you ever want to see that calculation, you can go to the DAX query view. Uh, you can actually use this function. I have explained in another video what info functions in DAX are. They are functions that gives you information about the metadata of your model, all the columns, tables, calculation, things like that. This function itself, info.view.columns, gives you a list of all the columns. And as you can see, these are all the columns in my semantic model. If I scroll down, I'll find this column that is English education groups. And if I scroll to the right under the expression, I will see that this is the expression that generates it. So here is the good thing about it. Without really writing that formula, this helped me to write this formula. I can then copy this formula and paste it in here. Uh, the only thing is that here you'll need to remove some of the, um, of course I did, I copied everything, I just wanted to copy that, uh, that single cell itself, I, don't, I didn't want to have the others, but here it is. This is that switch statement that created that, and you just need to remove extra double quotes, or in places that you have like two double quotes, you just need one, because it added it as part of a text of a value, that is why it appeared like that. If you separate those values, it looks like something like this. So here you see that I have something similar to that switch statement. I added it inside add column function just to show you how this works. So this part is the part that builds that formula and the result of that appears here. You can use this part and write DAX calculated column using this. So it's a really simple way of writing that DAX calculations without really typing that DAX expression using that graphical interface. Of course, my recommendation is always to go and build your grouping back in the data warehouse using SQL code because then you can reuse it in multiple places or even Power Query because you can use it in multiple semantic models. But sometimes for a proof of concept, sometimes you just need to create that grouping inside Power BI uh, and this is a really simple way of doing it because it adds it to the model. It is also a reusable way of doing it. 
I hope this video helped you to, um, to use this, implement it in your Power BI solution. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments below. Uh, we create videos and write blogs about Power BI and Microsoft Fabric every week. If you like this, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. Uh, we have weekly items that can be helpful for you. Until the next video, bye.